Hi dear students, in this presentation we are going to discuss about geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is a type of renewable energy taken from the earth's core. So as we know, if we move from the surface of the earth towards the core, the temperature of the earth is going to be increased. At the inner core we are having a very high temperature and the whatever existing at the inner core is in the uh, somewhat in a fluid like structure with because of that high temperature. But over that inner core we have a uh, we have a very thick layers of sand and all so that heat is not reaching up to the surface that's why we are able to survive here. So if we are able to abstract some amount of heat from that then that is what is known as geothermal energy. So actually at the inner core of the earth or in between the below surface of the earth the heat is actually coming from the original uh, because of the heat generated due when the original formation of the planet. Uh, in the earlier days, before the rain and all started, the earth was completely in a liquid form and the surface, uh, once the rain and all or the climate changed, the earth become uh, frozen and it is in the present state but inner core is still in the molten state. So heat is already trapped inside the earth because of the formation of the planet because of the uh, at the time of the formation of the planet itself and to add that one radioactive decay of the material is also generating some amount of heat which is also liberated and that is also creating some heat in the inner part of the earth so this heat either available uh, from the formation of the planet and also from the radioactive decay of the material are being used for the other purposes is known as geothermal energy. This thermal energy is stored in the rocks and fluids in the center of the earth. The difference between the temperature in the earth's core and the surface drives a continuous, continuous conduction of thermal energy from the center of center to the exterior of the planet. So as we know at the inner core we are having a very high temperature fluid or uh, semi solid like structure is there in the inner, at the inner core and outside we are having a very low temperature so if we can extract that heat we can produce the energy. Water or steam carry this geothermal energy to the earth's surface so this energy at the inner core is being carried naturally sometimes it is carried by the water or by the steam from the inner core to the earth's surface sometimes it is occurring as a natural phenomenon hot streams of water is available in some places it, but it won't be available in all the places and if you want to extract that energy from the earth inner core we have to drill a hole up to that depth but that also is not practically possible so it is not a, if, if its availability is there then in that places only we can go for extraction of the geothermal energy everywhere it is not practically possible some places are uh, luckily having a deposits of these types of energy. If you drill only a very few depth, then we are able to extract such types of energy. In that area only, we will be able to generate that energy. The high temperature of over 4000 degrees Celsius causes some of the rock in the center of the earth to melt and form hot molten rocks called magma. So, see, uh, around 4000 degrees Celsius is the inner core temperature. At that high temperature, even the rocks in the inner core also will melt and that molten state uh, con consisting of all the, everything is known as magma. These heats also cause the mantle to behave is plastically and portion of it converts convect upwards since it is lighter than the surrounding rock. So always uh, that mm, that mantle inside the uh, earth or at the inner portion of the earth is in, the, in a very high temperature and in a semi liquid form. So if any opening is available, there is a chance for it to come out through that opening and as a volcanic eruption and all, you might have seen this, the same thing is happening. If an opening is available, the magma inside, sorry, uh, mantle inside the earth is coming out through that particular opening and it is burst, bursted and uh, very high heat energy is produced. But unfortunately, we, we are unable to rec uh, produce that energy because it is very dangerous to construct a power plant or something like that energy extracting unit near to a volcano and all that is very difficult so uh, we have to go for the other options anyway uh, this the inner core of the earth is having a very high temperature which can be utilized for the useful purposes is known as extraction of the geothermal energy 
the rock and water in the earth's crust can uh, reach heats of around 370 degrees celsius see at the inner core uh, the temperature is around 4000 degrees celsius but if you come from the inner towards the outer surface as the uh, depth increases what happens is the temperature also is increasing or in other ways if you uh, drill a hole from the earth surface towards the inner core as the depth increases the temperature is going to be increased so at if you go on drilling uh, miles and miles so at some distance we can have a temperatures of around uh, even rocks will have the temperatures of around 370 degrees celsius that energy is being uh, utilized and that is what is known as geothermal energy thermal energy contained in the rocks and fluids can be found from shallow depths right down to several miles below the earth surface so in some places uh, which is abundant of deposits of uh, geothermal energy are there in that places if, if we even drill a hole of even one mile itself we will be able to extract uh, this types of energy see around one mile uh, depth uh, sometimes the hot rocks and hot waters are available some so in some places we have to drill more depth okay so it depends depending on its characteristic geothermal energy can be used for heating and cooling purposes or harnessed to generate clean electricity so usually we will be using this energy for heating purposes and even electricity is being produced from this geothermal energy if electricity is produced some basic cycles are to be clubbed with this one uh, like rankin cycle uh, that means some fluid is to be vaporized and that vapor will be expanded in a turbine and a turbine will be producing the power like that otherwise if it is for the heating purposes we will be directly uh, utilizing the uh, hot streams available from the inner core uh, for the heating purposes so there is no need of conversion at all however for electricity generation high or medium temperature resources are needed Uh, which are usually located close to the tectonically active regions only see i have already told uh, the the geothermal sources are mostly located close to the tectonic tect- tectonically active regions only adu volcanic eruptions okke nadakkan sadhyam angane illa area illa annu kudalayittullathu deposits illa so uh, it is very difficult to extract such types of energy and uh, implementing a plant and all will be very difficult wells up to a mile um, wells up to a mile deep or more are drilled into underground reservoirs to tap into the geothermal resources see i have already told uh, drilling hole to a very high depth is not practically possible we don't have that technology and all so we can maximum one or two miles only so if any hot water source hot water or hot rock sources are available within that depth then only we can extract geothermal energy the resources can be exploited from naturally occurring heat uh, rock and water uh, permeability or through enhanced geothermal system so some places are likely having very high uh, naturally occurring such sources so uh, if naturally it is not occurring then we can even go for enhanced geothermal system in that system what we will do is in natural system what we will uh, do is uh, the hot streams are directly coming out from the earth, earth core towards the inner surface there is no need to drill any hole and all the hot waters are continuously available uh, in such places and all but if uh, the water or steam is not available uh, or it is not coming out as naturally from such sources then we have to drill the holes that is what is known as enhanced geothermal system sometimes even we will be drilling the holes uh, below the earth surface around 2 mi- 1 mile or 2 mile depth we are having hot uh, rock sources what we will do is we will be uh, giving the fresh water into that into that area we will be pumping the fresh water into that area through one way and through the other way we will be collecting the hot water that is some example for enhanced geothermal system so which enhance or create geothermal sources through a process called hydraulic stimulation so such process are called hydraulic stimulation anyway sometimes natural sources are available and there is no need to pump and all because of the natural convection and all the st- very hot steam will be coming out coming out from the earth crust through the holes available and all or even uh, hot springs of water is also available directly available only thing we have to do is we have to extract it at the surface itself if they are not coming out uh, by the natural process we have to go for some other option like drilling the holes and extract it that's all okay these geothermal uh, resources whether natural or enhanced drive turbines linked to linked to electricity generators so if you want to produce the electricity uh, turbines are being uh, <coughs> clubbed with this uh, high source of energy high temperature source of uh, water or steam available from this geothermal source okay so by that we can produce the electricity also geothermal power plants come in three different designs so geothermal if you are uh, producing electricity then we have to go for the power plant so usually the geothermal power plants are in three designs 
dry steam, flash and binary. These are the three different systems. The oldest type is dry steam, which takes steam directly from the fractures in the ground to drive the turbine. See, I have already uh, told some places are very lucky to have. Drying steam is directly coming out of the earth crust and it is directly coming in this, uh, reaching the earth surface. So only thing we have to do is we have to do the arrangements to extract that steam directly from the earth surface and the steam is directly used for running a power plant or Rankine cycle or turbine will be rotated. So it is on steam, once the steam is ex uh, expanded within that turbine, the mechanical power is produced, which in turn is collect, collect, connected to, generated to produce the electricity. So to produce electricity in a uh, Rankine cycle, we need a steam. Luckily, in uh, dry steam, uh, power plants of geothermal power plants, uh, dry steam is directly available in a, in some places that is uh, directly used. That's all. Okay, there is no need to uh, uh, convert it into another form, or there is no other alterations are being made. Steam is directly available, and we will be using that steam. And uh, steam is expanded in the turbine, we will produce the power. That's all. The next one is flash plants. Flash plant means. Uh, see, uh, if you are having very high uh, pressurized and very high temperature fluid available, we will be mixing a low pressure uh, fluid along with that high pressure fluid so that the temperature may be slightly decreasing, but the pressure is dras drastically reducing. That means, uh, if you are heating a water, you see, for an example, if you are heating water in the normal atmospheric pressure, what happens is, water will start boil at 100 degrees Celsius. If you are able to reduce that pressure, instead of atmospheric pressure, we are going in heating, a, heating the water in a, a 0.5 atmospheric pressure, then what happens is, of course, that uh, boiling temperature is also decreasing. So these are dependent. So if pressure is decreased, boiling temperature is also decreased. So at low temperature, we can produce the steam. That is possible if pressure is reduced. So in flash plants, what we will do is we will pull high pressure hot water from the underground. So high pressure, high temperature hot water available at the earth crust is extracted and we will mix it with the cooler low pressure water. So this creates the uh, decrease in the pressure of the total fluid. That means uh, within that temperature, the entire water becomes a steam. Okay, That steam is then in turn creates steam that is used to drive the turbine. That is what is known as uh, flash plants. That process is known as flash, flashing process. We will call it as flashing. You see, a fluid at a particular uh, pressure, at a, a fluid at a low pressure is uh, in contact with a high pressure fluid, then what happens is the low pressure fluid on a, absorbing the heat from the high pressure fluid will vaporize. That is what is known as flashing process. Just in a fraction of a second, it is converted into, the water is converted into steam. So that's why it is called flash plants. The last one is binary plants. In binary plants, see, in flash plants, we have mixed the same fluid. See, high pressure hot water is mixed with, uh, from the underground is mixed with the cold or low pressure water. So both the both fluid are the same. That's why it is called flash plants. But here in binary, we will be using different fluids. See, uh, from the inner core of the earth, we have got a uh, very high hot water or pressurized hot water is available. So on a heat exchanger, this hot water is passing. Uh, passing through a heat exchanger through the coil of the other coil of the heat exchanger a low boiling point uh, fluid like refrigerant will be passing so on extraction of the heat from this hot water the refrigerant will vaporize that vapor, vapor of the refrigerant will be used to uh, run a turbine that type is known as binary plants since two types of fluids are used here that's why it is called a binary plants okay use of hot water passed through a secondary fluid that has a lower boiling point than the water the secondary fluid is turned into vapor which drives the turbine that is what is happening here. So uh, the secondary fluid will have a low boiling point or we call it as such types of fluids are commonly known as refrigerants. So only thing we need is instead of water turbine, we will be steam turbine, we will be using uh, the turbine corresponding to that refrigerant used. Okay. So that type of turbine we have to use for the power production. Anyway, uh, turbine will be connected. So this vapor formed will be expanding within the turbine to produce the power. That power is extracted by the blades of the turbine and it is producing some rotary motion. So shaft will be rotating. That shaft is connected to the generator which in turn will be producing electricity. So that's all about geothermal energy and geothermal energy extraction. Okay. Thank you.